This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by Impix. Shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. Manfrotto, imagine more. On one software, focused on photography. Tiffin, helping create the world's greatest images. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flashbenders for speedlight enthusiasts. Nick Software, photography first. And B&H Photo, the professional source. Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to another live episode of The Grid. We are broadcasting live from our headquarters, 11 feet above sea level here in Tampa, Florida. And we have some very, very special people here. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Him. Him. He's so dang special. Yes. <laughs> All right. This is uh, Matt Kleskowski. Hey, everybody. Good to see you again. Hey, Matt. I don't know if we talked about this, but it's okay to shave before the show. You know what's funny is we got... um. So Meredith was telling me that people are actually commenting, saying, like, I look tired and stuff like that. It's, it's just, yeah. just have them shave. Frames the face. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, we have a special in-studio guest artist who does but not But I'm not tired, by yeah, the way. Yeah, is not, not tired not either. Not tired. <laughs> She's not tired. Even though she just flew in from Dallas, we have Dixie Dixon with us. Hey. Hi, Dixie. How's it going? So <laughs> I have to tell a real quick story of, of how, we, how, we, how we met Dixie. So it was in New York City mm -hmm. at the Photo Plus Expo. And so Nikon has a big theater, mm -hmm. and uh, people pack in. To I mean, oh, you know, yeah. it's all it's Joe yeah. McNally. It's all the big names. And so I, I see a person who I didn't know her name at the time, <laughs> which I feel bad about. But uh, you know, so I, I'm watching. I, I was checking out different ones. I, I picked a couple I wanted to see. And so I go up there, and Dave Moser, my, our chief operating officer, is with me, mm -hmm. and she's on stage. We get there a little late. She's already on stage, and we sit down, and I'm watching her, and then she starts bringing up her images, and I'm like. Oh, she's really yeah. good. Oh, holy. And she looks really young to be this good. And I'm thinking, <laughs> whose images are these really? And so we're watching this. And she, and anyway, and, and she's got a great presentation, great images, the whole thing. And so Dave Moser leans over to me and says, we, we got to get her on the grid or something. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, we really do. So um, we, we met her at the show. We had, we had to track her down because when she was done with her presentation, she sprints. So she sprinted across the floor, but we actually ran into her a little later, and uh, we got, she had a great guest blog. I was on vacation when you did your guest blog, oh, really? but your guest blog was great. Oh, so you. if you go to scottkelby.com, you can read a little bit more about her. But what, but she's got uh, the, the the type of work that she's doing. So many of us out there would be like, wow, she's yeah. you know, oh my god, she's reached this incredible pinnacle at a very early age, which really makes us angry. So when we come back from the break here in a minute, we're going to take your questions. Uh, and we're going to talk about how she got in this business, you know, how she learned all this stuff. Um, Matt was just looking through her portfolio here, and her, her, her book is just incredible. Yeah, was and Matt's like, like, how did you learn to do all this stuff? It's a beautiful book. It's yeah. beautifully put together. And we're going to look at her website in a minute because Matt's hogging the book. Well, hold it up, Matt. Show some cool <laughs> no. stuff. No. Thank you, guys. Seriously. Hold up the cover, so the front much. cover. All right. Here we go. All right. <laughs> And this book had to be inexpensive to put together. What, 10 bucks, 12 bucks? Oh, yeah, $10. No, the, when you have a real professional portfolio out to go out and get work, the, the amount of money you spend on it is staggering. The time it and is. money, isn't it staggering? Indeed. It really is. Uh, Joe McNally's talked about that here on what he spends on, on making. You only make a few books. You don't make, like, 300. But, uh, yeah, some of the stuff is here. And you know what was interesting I found about your presentation, even though we're not supposed to be really talking about this till after the break, was some of the stuff that you do was like not not in Photoshop. Like it's it's old <laughs> it's, school. It was done in camera and I'm like, props, yeah, <laughs> that was really good. So uh, we're gonna talk about all this stuff and a whole lot more. But before we do that, we have a couple of quick little things to do housekeeping stuff. Number one is we we launched a brand new magazine this week. And it's called Lightroom Magazine. It is for Lightroom users. It has been an absolute disaster <laughs> since we launched it. Well, so, well it's, it's, it's actually fixed. been kicking butt. It's just it's a disaster oh, for some people. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's been one of those things where it, it was a long download. But a lot of people download it. I and mean, you go on Twitter and people are like, man, this magazine yeah, awesome. Yeah. It's great. And then followed by it timed out. I could never could not download, download it. it. Yeah. Now, now you have to realize what's interesting about iPads is they're all pretty much the same. Right? It's not like there's 10 different brands of iPad. If you have an iPad, it's only available for the iPad. If you have an iPad, 
it's an iPad. <laughs> of course, we all test it internally. They test it in France, where they're working with our developers are. Everybody tests it. It works great. Apple, Apple. Apple <laughs> gets the app. Apple gets the app. Apple will not really release they a not it. working, not right. downloadable they app. They test it, and, and it works for a ton of people, and it doesn't work for another ton of people. So it, it, it got off to a really, really horrible yet great start. We <laughs> were able to find the problem this week. Yeah. And so we've cut that download times in half, and the big problem that wasn't, that wasn't uh, working well kind of went away. Yeah. So if you tried a couple of days ago to download our, like, Try the first again. issue is free. And then it's just $4.99 for any other issues you wanted. There's two issues available now. But it's all Lightroom stuff. It's all great. Go check it out. It's available for the iPad. Go to the App Store and find it. And uh, it's not a super quick download, but it's half of what it was for people <laughs> last week. You, de you said you got it in what, 12? I got it in 12 minutes. minutes. I, I have a pretty, I have a Verizon Fios. I have a real fast connection at home. And it, I got it in 12 minutes. I had people saying, I got it in eight minutes. I got it in seven minutes. And then I had people saying, it took me two and a half hours. <laughs> so it, it, it hasn't been a great launch. It's a great magazine. And it's shattered. It's shattered our expect the, the downloads are, are crazy. Yeah, the it's, downloads it, are crazy. But thank you for, for downloading it because many of you have. But. It's not how you want to launch a magazine, I can tell you that. You don't want to <laughs> launch a magazine, you know, and have people go, I can't get it. That's the worst thing for a publisher, you know. And, and who is the editor, by the way, Matt? It's Matt. Matt <laughs> is the editor. So I, it's all on him. So I'm yeah. a publisher. I just sit back and go, <laughs> talk to Matt. Okay. Hey. <laughs> I, I point to the web guys. Oh, yeah, let's point to the web guys. Just Why go not? downhill. That's downhill. <laughs> downhill. No, no, no. The web guys no, we, are great. We, we got it all taken care of. So. Okay, so it's better go, go download it. Okay, a couple things. We have some giveaways today. What can we give away? We're going to give away Dixie's camera. <laughs> we're going to give her away book? her book. Oh, we're going to give away 10 copies of her book. <laughs> no, we're giving uh, away. Hey, we have a really great giveaway. I know we do. It's Photoshop awesome. Photoshop World. Full conference pass. Oh, that wasn't awesome. the one I was talking about. Oh, sorry, I, was, I was going on number one up there. Yeah. That's awesome. No, that's not that good. <laughs> Photoshop World, full conference pass. We are in Orlando, Florida in April, and we did something different in Photoshop World. We have seven different tracks. You can go to Photoshop World and watch nothing, but you can go for all three days and do nothing but lighting. You can do nothing but photo technique. You can do nothing but Photoshop for photographers. Lightroom. Photoshop nice. for designers. Lightroom. So you can just basically pick, it's like seven conferences, in one, all wrapped around photography cool. and Photoshop and graphic design. Like the way I put all that together. Well, and, and you know, I mean, we actually, we kind of went about the conference a little bit different this time. Yeah, we, we did. Kinda, we kind of yeah. built a conference that we thought people would want to go to, and then you start filling it with people. Right. Right. You know, and, and yeah, I think it's like, that's... Yeah, like, what would we want to learn if we could learn anything? Yep. And how would we learn it? And we, yeah. so we really did start from scratch. We're going to be giving away a full conference pass to that. Uh, Matt, you're on the road. We're going to give away some tickets to Matt's seminar. So where are you, where are you next? You're like um, in Oklahoma like tomorrow, aren't you? I leave for Oklahoma City tomorrow. Uh, so if you're watching this on Wednesday or Thursday, you can still get, a, you can still get by there for, uh, for the Friday seminar. And then next Thursday, a week from tomorrow, I'll be in Austin. And then mid-February, I'll be in Arlington and Atlanta. Hey, you're going to have a really big crowd Sweet. in Austin. I hope. I saw your numbers today. Yeah, I hope he's, he's going to have a big Last crowd. time I was in Austin, it snowed. Did it? In yeah. Austin? The day of my seminar. Wow. Really? Yeah. Texas weather. Unpredictable. Wow. Yeah, you know who's in Austin? Ted, Ted Waite. Yeah, editor. I know. I'm gonna have my book editors. We're going Ted to, there. Well, what's it called? My favorite. Well, he's your uh, book editor, too, isn't he? Um, what's the name of that place? Some Tex-Mex place. Chewies. 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 Right. All right. Also, uh, we're going to give away RCs on the road. So go to kelbytraining.com. Click on the live training button and you'll see where where rc is going to be where matt's going to be i'm nowhere i have no no seminars i'm launching a new seminar tour but not till i think april and i want to tell you about it now because it's so great it will blow your mind you'll forget <laughs> dixie dixon's here you'll forget matt's here it'll just be a big hazy, big, hazy buzz blur. of love hey when we come back we're going to be talking to dixie we really want to take your questions so if you want to send in questions brad moore b rad also dj b raddy rad is going to be monitoring your questions we would uh Okay, hey, we're gonna ask the first question. Are we? James says, lovely color, cover, would Dixie mind sharing her age? <laughs> I'm 27. She's 27. I think, yeah. I think. We hate, yeah, we <laughs> hate you. After Way 21, too early for that it sort of Yeah, runs we together. hate you even more, because you know. That's really the last good hey, birthday, isn't it? <laughs> I was a photographer when I was 27. What can you do? I didn't have a book like that. In fact, no, I don't think I could no. afford a book. <laughs> now, I don't mean a portfolio book. I mean like a book that you would buy at Barnes & Noble. It was a whole different world. People were not flying me around to be on their show. It was a very different time. <laughs> but, hey, we're going to take a short break. We're going to answer your questions. We're very anxious to answer your questions. I'm sure Dixie is because we have nothing planned. <laughs> Stick around. We'll be right back. You're live here on The Grid. <laughs>
can't wait to do this again. For more than 25 years, Peach Pit has been home to the world's best authors and continues to publish the best books, ebooks, videos, and apps. Whether you're an aspiring or established photographer, Peach Pit is here to help you learn new techniques and inspire your creativity. Peach Pit, the future looks creative. Hey, we are back, welcome back. Hey, if you're watching live at home, and I know you're not watching dead at home, if you're watching live, would you do us a favor? Right now, because you're sitting in front of your computer, your computer's right there, right? It must be. Must be. Yes. Take a moment, if you would, and just jump over to Twitter, to Facebook, or... Ooh, whose phone is that? Uh-oh. That's crazy, it's not That's my phone. Not my... <laughs> whose phone is that who said That's that so his phone you. was silenced? I think, the word, I think the words eat it even came out of your mouth when they said silence your phone. Uh-oh. <laughs> it happens. It's your no, show, No, it's somebody so from New York. <laughs> it's probably Peter Hurley. Oh, well, Dixie's from New York. I was just... <laughs> keep saying she's from New York. She's not from New York. She's from I know, Dallas. I know. Okay. All right. So um, what the heck was I saying? Oh, if you're watching at home, just send out a tweet. Hey, I'm watching The Grid Live. Come and join in. We would love it if you would help share the... Because we took like four weeks off for the holidays, and now we're kind of back. And we're, we're, So, uh, yeah, have them uh, come by here, uh, kelbytv.com slash The Grid. So if you would help us spread the word, we would be very grateful. We'll even give away prizes later. We'll help you. More prizes mm -hmm. than probably we even talked about. Okay. Oh, no, I got a kick butt prize to give away. Ooh. Brad, do you know those things that we... <laughs> no, we're not giving away Brad. Brad's way too expensive. The care and maintenance of Brad is insane. You do not want that. Brad is great, but Brad doesn't come cheap. No, Brad, you know those things that are on my desk in a yellow envelope? I don't want to say what they are. You don't have to get it right now. I'm giving away the coolest gift for... It's not for everybody. But mm -hmm. somebody is going to black out when they get this gift, and it's not if the that right it's, person gets it. If the right gets <laughs> the right it, if person. not, you're just going to go, what? No, but don't we let them choose which gift they want, Pete? Don't we say they can write what the gift they want is when they join this? You can write your gift. Cool. Someone's going to love it, and it's Somebody. bad. Pete just works here. <laughs> Pete just works here. Okay, so Dixie, before we get to some of the questions, and, and the yes. questions are already pouring in, good questions too. Yeah. Well, we'll just jump down to Doug Evans' one. Is like, when and why did you get started in fashion photography? Fashion photography, I think, always captivated me. And I studied abroad with a fashion photographer my junior year of college. And that's when I sort of fell in love with the fashion photography aspect of things and really just creating that, that illusion um, in the camera. And you know that really inspired me to go out and shoot my own, my own fashion work and sort of develop my style and um, really just get started in creating like this dream world. Because I feel like in life we get so much realism and I like to create sort of this illusion, this dream world in, in my pictures. So. It's, it's been and, a blast. And you, you, you know, because I think it's a part of the, a cool part of the story, which mm -hmm. is, you know, how you got out there. I mean, you had yeah. to apply to this, this program. I mean, you were in college right. in Texas, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Ranching, ranching, doing a lot of ranching stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we all have horses in Texas. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so what you what what year was it? Your last year or your third um, year? It was my junior year of college. I applied for for this program. So just through... a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so I applied for this program and 14 students got in and got to go over to London and Prague and, and study with a, a world-renowned fashion photographer. And his name's Jeff Licata. So, uh, Who picked up the tab for this thing? Was this a scholarship <laughs> kind of thing? I took out a loan for it. And really? Put it wow. back. I did. Okay, stop right there. <laughs> no, this is great. Mm -hmm. We talk about this all the time on this show, <laughs> mm -hmm. is that people... Are, are, have to invest in their future, and they have to do it's true. like like you actually took out a loan to I go did. and study. We talk about people that go, I want to shoot great landscapes, but I can't afford to fly to Arizona. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> that seems like a lot of work, getting up early in the morning and all. Mm -hmm. But you actually took out a business loan, I did. and you flew and you studied overseas. Now it, it sounds like mm -hmm. a wonderful opportunity. Yes, but. 
but still, you invested in yourself. And we talk about this so yeah. often, and I'm glad to see, see, this is what happens. <laughs> you wind up, you know, that, you're living, <laughs> next thing you know, you're living in Texas. But, um, all right, Completely hey, can we look at a couple of your photos? We have your yeah. website, yeah, so I, I want sure. people to see what we're talking about when we're, when we're talking about here. So, oh, look at, she's on the cover of Nikon World. How nice. <laughs> That's, I was in Nikon World once. I, I, did, I bet you I know. didn't have the cover. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, I was buried in there under oh, like, uh, I, doubt I think that. it was featured loser of the month or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. So look at these shots. So and and I, I want you to see these three ones particular here because I saw you show these actually in your presentation at the Nikon booth. Uh -huh. And one of the things I thought was really cool because I'm thinking, wow, she's really good at Photoshop. Look at the way these things fade away. <laughs> and she's talking to everybody and she goes, well, well, yeah. Well, actually, tell them, tell them how you get that effect because it's not yeah. a Photoshop trick. Yeah, I actually get that effect um, using Vaseline, and it's it's an old film trick. You can literally take a filter. Don't put it directly on your lens. Like a UV filter? <laughs> like, like That's a, UV a, or a UV filter. I'll take like a Tiffin filter and um, literally just buy a little thing of uh, Vaseline and put it on the very bottom of the of the filter, and it just basically creates this like blur. Um, you can do it in post, but I, I just personally like doing things in camera. I think it's more spontaneous, more... I don't know. It's organic. Yeah, it's, it's organic. Real. Yeah, yeah no, no, like, exactly. I'm all for getting it right in the camera. I wouldn't use Photoshop if yeah. I didn't have to. <laughs> exactly. So, no, that's very, very cool. Yeah. So now they saw, they just saw a little glimpse uh, of your work. <laughs> in your presentation at, at the mm -hmm. Nikon World, you showed all kinds of great yeah. stuff. And uh, and in your book, I mean, there's, there's just some. Can I just pick one out of the book that I thought was one I really particularly <laughs> thought was great? And, man, this book is heavy. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> this, book is, this book is heavy. It is heavy. I remember you shooting this Indeed. one. You talked about this one. You shot this at uh -huh. Union Station. Yeah, that's in, correct. In Los Angeles. That was I the... shot there, and it didn't look anything like that. Oh. I couldn't get that guy to <laughs> You, me, and Marv. Marv. <laughs> yeah, you, me, and Marv. Um, that was my first one? campaign I ever this shot. Is re really? That's your mm -hmm. first campaign? Mm -hmm. You're killing me. Okay. Um, I was really nervous. Hold on. Where is this, this <laughs> shot? I love this shot. It's just. A, is that the one where you? Now this is you just, uh -huh. this is kind of an iconic shot of yours right here, right? This <laughs> yeah. Is, like I saw this on monitors all over the Nikon booth. They were running this <laughs> shot, so you've gotten totally. kind of popular from that that shot. And yeah, and, uh, I think it's because of the hat. I tend to put hats on all the models shot. that I shoot. That I think it's because I love hats so much. So uh, well, this shot, I love things. this shot. <laughs> James Dean. -ish. I, it is so James. It's such mm. a period shot. I love the toning. The, you know, oh, let me find where it's not so there. It's not glowing <laughs> as much there. I love the toning of the image. Like the duotone effect is mm -hmm. spot on. Now, do you do your own post processing? I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I do have a retoucher I can work with, but I love to do the post. I have a retoucher I can work with. His name's Brad. Okay. <laughs> anyway, there's just uh, He's there's, awesome. it's a, your book is just it's just wonderful. Oh, All thank right. You. So I, I really now I, I know that I'm gonna want to read some of the questions, and I know a lot of people are gonna want to know because you know you kind of made it sound like oh I wanted to do this and I just did it, but. <laughs> Just like you invested in going to, to Europe and studying under right. a famous photographer and all, mm -hmm. and, and my hat's off to you. I think that's like, there's somebody doing it right. You know, you're, <laughs> you know, it's, you're not waiting for it to all fall in your lap. Yeah. No. So I want to ask you some questions, but I, what, what, I'm, what I want to hear is, mm -hmm. so it, it's like that Seinfeld episode. We went out on a date, something, something, yada, yada, yada. And that's, mm -hmm. you kind of said, oh, <laughs> I wanted to do this and I just did it. But there's so much hard work that goes oh, in. Oh, yeah. So you come back, uh, you come back from Europe. You right. studied under this amazing yeah, photographer. Junior in college. Right. All yeah. right. So now mm -hmm. you're back, you come back to college, your senior yes, year? Yes, senior year. All right. And, and so at, at that time, I was shooting um, weddings on the side for on the weekends for money and whatnot. And so like I, a sports photographer. <laughs> What's a sports photographer do in the game? On, in, in between games, two weddings. Exactly. So I told the wedding photographer I was shooting for. I was like, "Look, I think I want to do my own thing and sort of branch out and start shooting my own stuff." So my senior year, I dedicated to shooting portraits of friends, more fashionable type portraits, and uh, really pretty much started my business in college. Um, wow. That senior year, I got up my website and whatnot, and then so it was kind of like a gradual progression into it when I graduated. Oh, I got a question. Go ahead, man. I, mm -hmm. I, um, what were you, what were you studying in college? Down. Yeah, I was studying uh, entrepreneurship at TCU. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I always knew I wanted to, from a young age, I knew I wanted to be a photographer, so I always figured I needed to know the business side of things. So I went ahead and studied business so and minored in photo. What's the earliest, like, you remember, like, being really into <laughs> shooting? Like, what were, um, like, what were, you know? 
I was probably, I was an only child, so I had to entertain myself when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a little point and shoot camera that I would literally set up my stuffed animals and pose them back in the day. Probably, I was probably like seven. How wow. math is that it's now? Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not that impressed. And it, yeah, it started then. And just I would come home from vacations with 13 rolls of film, you know, from really? vacation. And I just knew, I just always in love with, with pictures. And wow. I would have all the magazines, but I would never read them. I would just look at all the pictures. So That's awesome. Yeah, super fun. All right. It's definitely. So my, mine is a follow-up question we were talking uh -huh. about. So you're in college. Uh -huh. Did, were people paying you? Like you said, you, you kind of started your business. Because uh -huh. this is the hardest thing, and I have people ask this. How yes. do you get people to pay you? Because you can yes. get friends to pose for free. <laughs> right. Right? Mm -hmm. and all. So how did you get to a point where people will say, I want to pay Dixie to take my photo. Right. She's a college student, but she's so good I want to pay her. So how did, can, how did that all yeah. come about? Well, I mean, I would shoot a couple friends for free, and I would post the images on Facebook. And then their friends of friends would say, ooh, I want you to shoot my portrait. And I'd be like, okay, well, send me, you know, your info, and I'll email you my rates and whatnot. And at that point, you yeah, know. they don't know it was for free. Right, exactly. So, you know, you kind of got to show the kind of work that you want to shoot in your portfolio and in, in your website. And uh, people will start hiring you f exactly for that kind of work. So you use Facebook so. as your marketing platform. Uh -huh. You know, when I, when I first started out, we, we, uh, <laughs> we only had Twitter. <laughs> You know, I tell, I, I have a 16-year-old son. Mm -hmm. I, I'd love you to meet him. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> anyway, I have a 16-year-old son. He's a big kid. He's like 6'1". He's like awesome. He's yeah, he's like as tall as me now. Yeah, I know. He's, 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 he's a wall. My brother calls him the wall. He's really, you know. Anyway, but, um, uh, oh, God, what was my story? <laughs> <laughs> I had, I had Oh. Oh, yeah. Twitter, so you I, I have these moments where I, I tell him about, you know, what life was like. But I said, yeah, we didn't have the internet. Life he's like, Twitter. <laughs> you didn't have the internet? How did you look up stuff? <laughs> we actually got in a car. And drove, <laughs> drove to a library. library yes. Where they use a thing called the Dewey Decimal System, which is the stupidest thing ever invented. And it only exists in libraries to make people crazy. Because if you go into Barnes & Noble and you want to find a book, oh. it's simple. <laughs> but if you go into a library, it's impossible. <laughs> anyway, so I had to, and he's like, I just can't imagine a world without the internet and Google. no Twitter and no Facebook. <laughs> so luckily you were starting out at a time where yeah. Facebook was a very free marketing thing. Mm -hmm. All right. So you, you marketed helpful. yourself through, through Facebook and uh -huh. you started to get some paying clients. Yes. Now, so you're still in school uh -huh. when you, when you're, you're, you come out of school mm -hmm. a few years ago. Yes. Then what? So how, how then did you establish your business? I actually, I applied for... I, ha I think I had a moment where I was a little bit scared to jump right in, and I actually applied for an investment job because I had a business degree. And I was like, maybe I'll kind of do photography on the side as I, you know, work up nine to five. But then I, talk I had a mentor at the time, and he's like, you know what? If you're going to try it, like now is the time. Yeah. Just go for it. So oh, yeah. I went you know and jumped you right in. You won't quit that other job because right. you'll start paying your bills and right. you'll wind up having. You get stuck in your lifestyle. Yeah. You'll, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, you have the things that you want, but you're not following your dream. And, right. Yeah. So true. So, I mean, at that point, you're right out of school. You don't mind living on ramen for a year or two. <laughs> but um, so I guess, I mean, I, I got out of school and I immediately, I turned down that job with the investment company that I, I actually got the job. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I got to follow my passion. And then um, I started doing assisting work and I literally got a job assisting one of the, at the JCPenney headquarters, assisting one of the JCPenney's fashion photographers. Um, so I did that for a few months, now, and that was paid the, the bills. Was the photographer that you were working for at JCPenney, mm -hmm. was he doing catalog work for uh -huh. JCPenney? Yeah, okay. He the wasn't nice, like, come in and do a portrait studio. No, he no. Was, okay. <laughs> he was doing JCPenney catalog work. Right, okay. exactly. So I was doing a lot of assisting there and uh, paying the bills that way while I built my portfolio and was shooting my own work, too. Now, I want to ask so. you a question. Uh -huh. This is a personal question. It has nothing to do, you don't even have to listen to this. Because <laughs> I have an assistant, a uh -huh. assistant. Like, what kind of stuff did you do? Oh, <laughs> um, assistant, a lot of labeling. Jack. Labeling every image labeling. that comes in that oh. studio. And labeling. Then, <laughs> Dude, I, keep a lot of labeling. I was oh, a professional man, label maker when I was an assistant. Okay, we don't even have a label maker, so that's first. <laughs> yes. First, get a label maker and then. Label maker. Lens. Okay, what else did you do? Okay, um, I did painting, painted backdrops. And, uh, Brad, call someone. I'm not <laughs> kidding you. Brad has never painted a backdrop. Brad, call someone and has them come in. All right. Nice. Paint. 
<laughs> I can get paint on my hands. And then so corporate would send the lighting diagrams to each photographer. And so we would literally have to set up the lights to the corporate lighting diagram. So it's nice because all the lighting's done for you. Brad but... never takes direction from corporate. <laughs> but the thing is, is it kind of takes away from some of the creativity, I feel like. So we well, don't have any creativity. <laughs> all right. Okay. Hey, let's take some questions because we have a bunch of questions coming in. They're really, really good. But I kind of, I, 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 I think it's so interesting on how, you know, how to make, how to jump from college and, and open your own business, which is, it's scary. And I agree with the, the advice yeah. that you got from your mentor because you do, you take a regular job and you think it's only going to be for six months and mm. it's six years and it's 16 years old. Kevin Halliburton, a very good guy, asks, <laughs> uh, how the heck does a Texas girl end up taking the fashion world by storm on both coasts? Because you do work in New York and you in L.A. Uh -huh. I mean, we just showed one of your shots Miami. from L.A. Yeah. Miami. Uh -huh. how, do you get, how, how do you get these connections? Like, I think it started through Facebook, literally. Oh. <laughs> I know. I'm not doing crazy. enough on Facebook. Um, but, I mean, I just have a lot of contacts in LA that I shoot with and uh, I'm building my contacts currently in New York and I'm actually working on sharing a space in New York and post possibly LA so I'm working on being more bi-coastal so I don't so I have a place to stay when I go there now when you say so. you're building your contacts mm -hmm. um, is this is this something that you're contacting the people do you uh -huh. have an agent that's contacting Both. the people mm -hmm. so, okay so yeah okay so so how, have an agent. how long have you had an agent when, when did you get to that um, point Three, I've had an agent for about three years. Mm -hmm. And a lot, a So just after she got out of college. <laughs> <laughs> Two years after. Two years after. So, you, yes. so you, did you already say your age? Uh, yes. Okay, so 27, 27 yeah. so figure you got out of college, 22. Mm -hmm. So out of college, we're talking five, five years you've built this. Yes. That's, that's freaking right. crazy. Yeah, is there anything in there that, <laughs> that you did while you were crazy. in college? Is there any college work in there um, or is it all post college? No, my hard drive from college. Uh, <gasps> That's you why you have learned a backup? To, I did not. A okay. lot of learning Brad is making mistakes backs first. Up. Brad backs up. Brad, <laughs> That's good. So, all right, Brad, you're good. You got to back up. All so right. I lost a lot of data in college. Okay, but. so I, I'm going to ask another follow-up question based on this whole Facebook thing because huh? we get asked this so much, and people are saying, because everybody wants to use Facebook because it's it's free, it's inexpensive right. and all. Mm -hmm. So and, and so you you post your pictures up there, but mm -hmm. can you do you have any advice for our, our viewers on how, how to connect with clients via Facebook? Like, you know, I would do blank, or I found that this works, or you found something that doesn't work on Facebook that would help um, our, our viewers. I use Facebook. Facebook, I don't share a whole lot of personal stuff on Facebook. I use it, but I use a personal page mainly, mm -hmm. okay. but I use it for business. Um, so, I mean, I post my photos up there, you know, share my adventures. Um, I really just... Do you show like behind the scenes stuff? Uh -huh. Yeah, or? behind okay, the scenes so is great. Oh, People love to see you that. had a very good video. Uh, that you showed in your presentation, uh -huh. and it was very well done. The production uh -huh. was really great. Uh, Thank you. But I could, I could, I thought that was really w great because if you were a client looking for somebody, mm -hmm. it kind of gave you a peek into this is what it would be like shooting yeah. with this person. Like right. if I hired you right. to do mm -hmm. a, a fashion spread, you yeah. could look at it and go, wow, they look like they're having fun on the set, and it was kind of black and white, exactly. right? Uh huh. Yeah. That's that's good. Now, do you run videos like that on your Facebook page? I, I've I never do. been to your Facebook page. I'm I sorry. Do. What is your Facebook page for people that want to find? Yeah. Yeah. It should be under Dixie Dixon Photography. No, oh, it's pretty oh. tough to find. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. For so. sure. Well, the fashion brands right now not only are looking for still images, but they're looking for video behind the scenes videos to put on their website. So I started collaborating with a friend of mine. His name's Lorenzo, and he does amazing videos. So I'll shoot the stills, he'll shoot the video, and it ends up being a really cool uh, combination. So. And hey, there you are. Yeah. It was just like you said. <laughs> For All sure. Right. And you've got, uh, so you have photos up here. Hey, Skip mm -hmm. Cohen's one of your friends. Oh, Skip's awesome. Yeah, Skip is love awesome. Skip. I love Skip. I just saw Skip at a conference and Eddie Sweet. Tapp. Holy yes. crap, it's Eddie Tapp. Eddie Tapp. <laughs> totally. So, okay. Now, so you use this for business. So, and and I'm, I'm I'm trying to look at this from yeah. a way to help. We, we get so many questions about this stuff. Oh, totally. And you're a success story with this. So I, I really want to look at this. <laughs> so you have an about page. It tells you all about you, all the things that way you do. Way too many quotes on there. <laughs> no, that's Okay. <laughs> All right, so. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm like a master. I'm not a master social networker or anything. I don't use Twitter as much as I should, but I just try to keep it real and try to post every you know week or so new images. You only do it once a week? Well, yeah, usually. You're killing me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I post 11 times a day, and I have like 14 <laughs> friends. Okay, let's get some more questions. Gary Monroe asks, how do you connect with your models to get what you want? Uh -huh. And so, Gary, I'm assuming that Gary's more asking, 
like how do you emotionally connect with right. them rather than like right. how do you contact them on the phone? Yeah, um, that is huge. Um, your connection with your talent is definitely going to make your images really stand out. So I think all that goes into creating the experience when you shoot. And um, so anytime somebody arrives on my set, I'm literally, I have music playing, um, I have food on set, everything's a really, really comfortable atmosphere. And so they feel comfortable enough to express themselves, you know, in camera. And I'm instantly when they arrive on set, I'm telling them how beautiful they look, how excited I am to shoot them today. Just everything really, really, really positive energy. I'm a big like energy person. As weird as that sounds, it's like <laughs> you really have to create a beautiful, like enthusiastic energy on set in order to get that mood out of people where they don't look stiff and sort of uncomfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what if they come to your studio and they're not mm -hmm. beautiful? Let's say it's Matt. <laughs> He's and beautiful. And they come. <laughs> <laughs> if he shaved, he would look beautiful. But what it looks like now, he looks homeless. Okay, so I'm kidding. You don't. You look fully employed. Thank you. Um, okay, so you're you, you talk to them and like and, and how long do you spend like kind of rapping with them or? I will them say to... when I shot portraits, I would literally stalk my portrait clients on Facebook. I would figure out what music what they like, what you know, interests they have, literally do a background check on them basically so I have a connection instantly when they walk on set. Ah. So instantly it's like, oh, you like John Mayer. You know, you have that instant connection and they, you know, loosen up. Instantly. Oh, that's good. So you're doing a little research yes. on them, kind of like mm -hmm. an interviewer word, like yeah. someone that's going to do yeah. an interview, exactly. you do a little research, you find out, and oh, I just happen to have some John Mayer right here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so so now let's say they get there, uh -huh. um, and, and I'm going to guess not every single one of your the people that you mm -hmm. shoot is just snaps into pose and is perfect <laughs> no. every time. No. All right, so they get there, mm -hmm. and this happens to be one of those people that is, you mm -hmm. know, you're shooting. Maybe it's right. a test shoot. Right, yeah. yeah you, so, so you start shooting. Is it? Are, right. Bam! Are you nailing shots right away, or no. are you kind of like what happens? <laughs> you know, what happens when they're not? You know, um, you take a few shots. Do you stop? Do you talk to them? Yeah. You, so do? immediately when the with a model or portrait client, whoever it is, gets there, they go into hair and makeup, and that takes like two hours. So they've walked in. I see what they look like in person. I see their face shape, all that good stuff, and so. I'm uh, I'm setting you know up the lights and then I'll have them come while they're in hair and makeup and test the lights on them and I'll kind of evaluate and see if I like the lighting and if I don't like it I'll switch it up or if I like it I may keep that lighting I'm going with so in the beginning I think you're feeling out what looks good because you know sat natural light looks better on some people studio light looks better on some people you mm -hmm. just never know until they get there yeah so a lot of the very beginnings of a shoot I feel like you're experimenting and then you sort of hone in. Um, after you shoot, shot a little bit, all right, holding so on those money shots. I'm gonna re I'm gonna refer to something we talked about. I was trying yeah. I was trying to lead you down into nice. this path, but <laughs> I don't think we're. Good. I, I think it's because we talked about so many things at once. Right. I don't think you know totally. you're, you're picking up on it. Um, when one of the things I thought when we were coming mm -hmm. back from lunch that you said, and it was like Pete and I were both were like, that's really good. Right. Was when you're photographing somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, so we talked about it's a warm up. Right. You know, it's you know, you're exactly. you're kind of honing in on the shot that you want. Right. Um, and you said you you've seen a lot of times where someone will stop shooting. Right. And when and when you stop shooting, the mm -hmm. talent immediately starts thinking, what yeah. am I doing wrong? Exactly. I mean, there's a million yeah. things that run through your head, especially exactly. the people you photograph, because mm -hmm. they're used to moving for every shot. Right. They hear the click and they move into the next exactly. pose. They hear the click, they move to the next one. Mm -hmm. What you said was you actually keep shooting even yes. if you're not happy. Right. So, on like I said about positive feedback, if you're shooting and you know, if you're shooting a model or whoever it is, and you're taking a while to sh you know click the shutter, the model is instantly going to think, oh, I'm not doing the right poses, I'm not doing doing the right mm -hmm. thing. So, you know, I, even if they don't have the right pose at that moment, I'm shooting through it and giving them good feedback instead of like stopping and saying. That looks horrible. I mean, models, people don't relate to that. Yeah. They're like, oh, I'm doing something wrong, and they instantly like tense up. Yeah. So I'll literally just shoot through that moment until they get to a comfortable, comfortable Damn, spot. That's a really good tip. I mean, so, it's just because the last thing you mm -hmm. want them sitting there thinking about is, is I suck. Yeah, what am I doing <laughs> yeah, wrong? What right. am I? Because then it they just becomes exactly. self conscious. Yeah, yeah it spirals down from it there. Totally, yeah. So you're almost like, you're not just warming up, but you're letting them warm up too. Right. Exactly. Yeah, everybody's ice cold, right, yeah. when you first mm -hmm. start shooting. A couple more questions. So uh, we already answered the one, did you go to college? Uh -huh. So let's go mm -hmm. to, to Cub Fan asks, what photographers inspired you? Ooh. Um, 
I can never pronounce his name. <laughs> Patrick Demarchelier, is that right? I think that's how you pronounce it. He's a yeah, great, that's it. <laughs> he's a great fashion photographer. And uh, Paolo Reversi, I love his experimental style. Um, there are so many uh, that, photographers that I love. I'm constantly finding new ones that inspire me, for sure. All righty, there we go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Tony Goodman, what camera lens does Dixie use primarily? I love the... You know what, it's funny, I use a lot of older film lenses um, because the Nikkor, I find it interesting, the Nikkor lenses, the newer ones, have this nano coating, mm -hmm. which is great if you don't want lens flare. Yeah, yeah it's dangerous. But it is, it's lens awesome lens if you don't want lens flare. Yes, yeah, awesome, but if you want lens flare, I, I love lens flare and I want that. So a lot of times I'll buy older lenses to get that sort of you know lens flare -y look. Um, but I love, gosh, the 85, the 180, um, I literally started out with a D70 camera and only a 50 millimeter lens. Um, that was all the equipment I had when I started out. So keep in mind, you don't have to drop a bunch of dough on you know the best of the best equipment when you start out. So and you, you said a 180 millimeter? Mm -hmm. All right, and you use that one a lot. Is that one of your yeah, favorites? Yeah, it's one of my favorite headshot lenses. So that's lenses. an old school. Old school. Old, old <laughs> yeah. school lens, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a prime, just yeah, a 180. Yeah, just primes. And, I shoot mainly primes. And you said 85 mm -hmm. Are you mostly using that outdoors? Yes. All right. Uh -huh. So 8514. Uh -huh. How much uh, do you do studio versus location? I would say currently half and half. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you do a lot of gr like gray seamless stuff? Uh huh. Shooting a lot I do. of gray seamless. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of gray seamless. Um, when you're shooting in studio, you have a lot more control. So if I'm shooting for a client that wants their product completely in focus, it's great to have those strobes because you can make everything in the image really, really crisp. Um, and it's always good to have a good macro lens. I love the, the Nikkor 105. It's one of my favorites. But, you, but you're still shooting portraits with a macro lens. Right. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's, it's yeah. a, it is a, a lens that we got real close up on this microphone, but you're actually, <laughs> you, they work great for portraits. A lot yeah. of people yeah. use The 105 is a wonderful yeah, it's portrait a one, lens. It's yeah. a wonderful it's a portrait lens. lens. All right, very good. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, well, we're, since we're talking about gear, Sam Yan asks, "What's uh -huh. what's your go-to lighting setup?" So if you're if, if you're like, it, so we're gonna say it's not the client's requirement. Like okay. you're gonna do a, a project for yourself, and it's mm -hmm. gonna let's just say just to keep everything simple, it's gonna be a gray seamless shot. What's uh -huh. your go-to? Are we lighting? talking strobes or constant? Strobes. Strobes. Um, probably. You know, a lot of my images are shot with one light. Super simple. Um, I use a, a beauty dish, either straight on, just above, or up to the side a little bit. Okay. And uh, that's... Do you use a diffusion sock over the beauty dish? Um, usually not. Usually not. Oh, I yeah. like that contrast. Your subjects must have good skin yes. because I'll yes. tell you what, if I'm shooting Matt, I throw a diffusion. <laughs> I put two of them over it and a pair of Brad socks. And it looks like I shaved by the time and it looks, and when you're done, it looks like frosted snow. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's in studio. You're using a beauty dish. How big? Mm -hmm. Like 17 inch um, or a big, big one? 22? Like a big old I have two. honker or a kind I of I usually, small. I have a big one that's about this big and then I have a smaller one. Which one, what do you choose? Whether, whether you're If I want your it to be or... more moody, I'll use the smaller one one because it you get that sort of fall off yeah um then if i want to use the bigger one to get if i want to get full body you can do that with the bigger okay bigger beauty dish. so usually just one light uh -huh. beauty dishes or i'll do a three light setup and then overexpose the sides um to get that cool um jawline on guys a lot hey, can, of you, can you give us a, oh on guys okay uh -huh. so you're doing rim lights on both sides right okay. and it, those are usually overexposed a little bit and and, and so the like maybe a stop or two higher Over. than the front light uh -huh. and are you so the backlights are they bare roll strobes grids on um, them usually boxes? umbrellas umbrellas mm -hmm. so a couple of umbrellas and still the beauty dish up front uh -huh. all right yeah. okay oh wait now <laughs> what if you're you, you mentioned constant lighting uh -huh. so uh, so these are these are not flashes. They're just stay on all the time. Right. Are they hot lights? Soft? I mean, they like um, Westcott spider lights or. What I are they? love my new favorite constant light is the Joker bugs. You ever guys heard of this? Mm -hmm. Joker bugs. I literally put a Joker bug in the middle of a Mola beauty dish yesterday, and it looked amazing. I love Joker it. bug. Yeah, it's an HMI light, but it's a lot more oh portable. Oh my gosh, is this? It's really These are cool. Really expensive. Well, you don't buy them; you rent them. <laughs> yeah, they're four or five thousand dollars. Yeah, they're they're expensive. Dear Lord! I'm expensive it says tape. it will be drop shipped to you directly from the manufacturer. You know why? Because nobody can nobody, keep them in stock. Yeah. They're five thousand dollars. I wouldn't have that laying around the warehouse. They're only hundred bucks to rent, though. They're so hundred bucks. Where do you rent, rent your stuff from? Um, usually MLD. MLD, and they're in Dallas. Uh huh. So hundred bucks a day. What camera store do you like in Dallas? 
Um, I love Arlington Camera. Yeah. I totally partial. Joker bug. So which Joker bug do you rent? The 200, the 400, or the 800? I rented both the 800 and the 400 for a commercial yesterday. Wow. It's beautiful light, especially beautiful when you light, put um, it so, inside a beauty dish. Okay, so you attach a beauty dish to the front of it. Mm, we kind of rigged it because it didn't have. So the this right is this, is this hot lighting? This is this actually is, it's warm. Do you feel? The it heat? is a little bit hot, but it's daylight balance. It looks cool. It's it really looks cool. cool. It's like it looks like something you'd, you'd light your lawn with, <laughs> like you'd light a tree in your yard. You know? <laughs> yeah, it does. A little it does look like, like that. Call of Duty. But Joker most HMIs bug. have that huge ballast that you have to use. Well, um, this one is portable. Oh, do airplay? It's, it's, okay. The rest of the audience can't see one thing. Yeah, so <laughs> oh, so this you guys, is you guys don't worry about what's going on up here. We're just gonna have our own little talk. When I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, okay. When I'm shooting strobes, I shoot pro photo for sure. You shoot pro photo strobes, uh -huh. man. You're just like. Uh, you're obviously using client money here. <laughs> like, oh, we rent pro photos and then we rent some Joker bugs. This here's a Joker bug K5600. We use this to light a monster truck right there. We were doing a monster truck and tractor pull Saturday. Pulled out a couple of Joker bugs. You know what I like? Oh, wait, it cycles back and forth between just two pictures. Now, seriously, can, can I say something? Uh -huh. I think we can get something just like this from Home Depot. <laughs> I'm not kidding. These Go are back so to the, bright, though. I'm sure they are. Have you ever but been to Home Depot and bought their brightest ones? Go I have back not. to that. Can you see I it real should. quick? I would love Watch to. this next one right here. <laughs> not that one. Sorry, there's another one. Talk on. Why did it stop going? <laughs> this one. Tell mm -hmm. me you can't get It's like a car headlight. <laughs> it does right look like there. that. At Home Depot, Brad, get us a couple of those and just stick a Joker Bug sticker on it. And then put it in a beauty dish. And put it in a beauty dish. <laughs> so how does the beauty totally. dish attach here? It's, um, I, we rigged that. It doesn't really, it's not really made for a beauty dish, is no. it? No. You know, when you spend $5,000, why should it be easy to put a softbox on? That's crazy. It came with a softbox, so I just like the contrastiness yeah, of the just, beauty dish. Just crazy, really. I'm sorry. Okay, let's get back to some questions here. So uh, what... Oh, let's, let's ask this one from Quentin. Okay, so exactly where did you get the book made? So your portfolio book, which uh -huh. is, and the, you can't tell, but the pages are very heavy. It has like a glass cover over it. It's like a very, very nice wedding book. Is it like a Suka books or something? It's a graphic. Hold it up. Mm -hmm. Hold it's it a graphy studio book. It's graphy studio? Uh -huh. With the crystal glance cover. Oh, they have beautiful stuff. Oh, they with do. the crystal, with the crystal, what they have awesome Crystal stuff. glance cover. Crystal glance mm -hmm. cover. They have awesome stuff. That's cool. So keep in mind that with these books, though, you can't constantly update them because it's a bound book. Oh, yeah. So I'll put my new work on my iPad and then have this book, you know, for half a year until I order a new one. How, so. how many do you order? One? Um, usually two. Two. That's mm -hmm. got to be very inexpensive. One for my agent, one for me. <laughs> oh, one for your, so one mm -hmm. for the agency. Right. One for you. Mm -hmm. Now, do you ever send this out like, un, like, like mm -hmm. if someone says, hey, I'm in Miami and I want to yeah. see your work, you'll ship the book? Uh-huh. And you send them like a please FedEx it back. Yes. Kind of thing. Okay. Yes. Wow. That's always a little scary, but yeah. Uh, so so I'm just totally. gonna I, I I'm just gonna ask this, and you can be very vague about it. Uh -huh. Is a book like this three hundred dollars mm -hmm. a piece or more? Um, a little bit more sometimes. It depends oh, okay. on the amount of pages <laughs> yeah, was you do, <laughs> but it's worth the investment if you book no, a no, huge no, of course, job it's, it, it's off of your calling it. Once you no. can pay for it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's, so yeah. uh, That's about all of it pay for, <laughs> yeah. but still. All right. So I'm, I'm going <laughs> to ask this one. I know the kind of the answer because I, I heard you talk about this in your presentation at uh -huh. the Nikon booth. Um, Cody asks, asks, where did you get the hat? And if you, I just saw on your Facebook page, there's two pictures of you both in a hat, uh -huh. and you're into hats. Yes, and you totally. Hat. This you, hat? Yeah, that, where'd you get that hat in um, particular? Actually, it's kind of funny. I was doing a, a month-long shoot in December um, for a new camera, and we had a great stylist on set, and she brought this hat for one of the models, and I kind of snagged it. Snagged so it from the models? I snagged it from the yeah, models how after many, the shoot. How many hats do you have? It was really peaked I that have, hat. like... 30 hats or more. Like 30 hats. Wow. I don't, I feel more creative with the hat on. <laughs> bald, 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 bald. Okay. That's what Pete, Pete People said. might think that. Pete was saying yeah. that, but it's not, it's not me. All I right. Well, feel more the, creative. Uh, what's his name? He does the, the guy from Poison that did the show. He always wears the thing around his head. Oh, yeah. Oh, like really? there. Oh. <laughs> hey, every rose has its thorn. Hey, um. Just how, like every night. <laughs> 
has its dawn. You know, every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. This would make any kind of sense to Dixie if she wasn't freaking 27. She's going, I don't get these references. Who is Poison? Oh, I know who Poison No, is. Poison. No, they're totally only, because of the, poison. only because of the reality show. I was in a ska band. You were in a ska band? Mm -hmm. Played saxophone. Did you? <laughs> I don't know if you realize that poison's not big in the skull no, scene. Not okay. Skull, but See. But All right. Hey, uh, where did you find your agent, D Dr. Bear or uh, Dr. Bear? Asks. Yeah. How'd you find your agent? So the agency thing. I think a big misconception about agents is that once you get an agent, you can just like sit back and relax, <laughs> <laughs> and they'll get you all the jobs. Totally not you true. Just sit and wait for the phone ring, right? Totally not true. Your book tomorrow. No. Hey. Yeah. Dixie, I got your job. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it worked that way. Um, but so I'm still going out a lot and, sh and you know, seeking out work, showing my book, cold calling, all that stuff. I'm still doing all of that. But the agent does help the production side. And honestly, I got my agent um, through a makeup artist. And she works with my agent a lot. And I had worked oh. with her on some test shoots. And she said, hey, if you're looking for a new um, lifestyle um, commercial fashion photographer, they're like, I know of somebody. And then I met with them. We hit it off. And sort of went from there. So. All right. So, I, oh, go ahead, man. So, mm -hmm. so that's, that's the agent mm -hmm. part of the way a, a, right. a shoot will start. Yes. How about from, you? because you just said cold calling. So, so mm -hmm. what's, what's a day, like, you wake up and you're like, mm -hmm. I need to go sell photography oh, hey, today. Hey, this is kind mm -hmm. of, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask his question in a different way. Okay, go ahead. And, and so what my question was going to be, but it's kind of like what Matt's is, uh -huh. how much of your time is spent? Now, you're at you're at a very successful part of your, of your career. I mean, you're, you're, you're shooting the things that you are for the clients that you are, because we saw your, your client list. It's like just insane. Thank you. So <laughs> uh, how much of your day is spent marketing, doing business, you know, all that stuff? And how much mm -hmm. is it is it or of a week? Let's do a week. So uh -huh. of a week, how much of that time is spent on the business side of it, and how much is spent actually pulling the trigger on a on a shoot? Ooh. I shoot usually a couple times a week, so the rest of the time is spent in pre-production, calling. You know, getting these huge teams together is no small <laughs> undertaking. You got to have the hair and makeup, the wardrobe the um, producer, the art director, everybody has to be on the same same page. So we'll have like conference calls before the shoot mm -hmm. and uh, everyone needs to be well versed in what's going on. And then everything is all put together before the shoot happens, the shot list is everything put together. And then so the day of the shoot will run really seamlessly and we're able to get all those shots in one day. So, or two days uh, or whatever it is. So it's a full day shoot. You shoot from morning till night, generally. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Really long, <laughs> long shoots. shoots. Right. Yes. How many things do you like, for example, if you're doing a full day shoot, mm -hmm. how many things would you say you would knock out in a day? So how many looks? Mm -hmm. Let's say, we, you know, the client says, we're going to shoot all day long. Right. We've rented a studio and we've and we've got a joker bug. <laughs> hey, man, we've got a joker bug. Joker bug. I know this one girl, <laughs> darling. Anyway, so you've rented your joker bug. <laughs> Uh, how many looks can the client expect in a day? Um, well, when you're shooting on location, you're going to get less looks because it's a bunch more setups. So with that Florsheim shoot for the shoe company, mm -hmm. we did we did 20 shots that day, which was a lot. Ooh, that 20 is 20 different lot. setups. And how long was it the was day? It was stressful. <laughs> um, it was we we shot till about six, eight to six. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so um, you're shooting one or two days a week, three days a week you're working on the business side of it. Yes. Okay. That's or kind of, did that was, was that three what days kind of a week? No, no. <laughs> More no. like two days shooting and five days. Five days. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. So you're no, all right. You don't get Saturday well, no, and that, day off. No. Well, you hear this. The, I, I think a lot of people have the idea that, uh, hey, I'm going to go start my photography business mm -hmm. and all, I, you know why I want to do it? Because I want to shoot, 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 shoot. And if I quit my day job and go do this, I'll be able to just photograph all the time. And I, think I wish that, that was the Yeah. Yes. That people realize, oh no, this is a business and there's yeah. taxes and bills yes. and conference Dude, calls yes. and client meetings and selling mm -hmm. and all the other things. You're a business owner. How many Saturday, you know? How many uh, Saturdays and Sundays do you uh, totally get off, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of along that, where, where I was going with is just I thought people might find it interesting, mm -hmm. that aspect of you selling right. your photography business. Uh -huh. what, you know, what kinds of things do you do? Like, you know, do you see a client that mm -hmm. you, is, is that how it happens? Like you see XYZ client and you're like, I'd love to shoot for them. I like their style. Mm -hmm. I like their products. I like to shoot for them. Right. How do you do that? What do you do then? Um, basically, you can research your client. 
I Google around <laughs> a lot and try to find people's info, um, contact magazines that I'm interested in shooting for. And a lot of times when you're cold calling and trying to get meetings, you literally have to make 20 cold calls to get one meeting. It's like this. And you do the calls yourself? I do. Right I here. Do. <laughs> wow, good for you. Oh, man. It's, it's hard, right? It's brutal. It is brutal. It's tough. And you have to have a thick skin because people are going to be, you know, when you get called by a salesperson, you're like, whatever, hang up. But some people will talk to you. I think the more real you can be and say, hey, I have some new work I'd love to show you um, when you cold call, I think that people like genuineness as opposed to getting a sales call. Mm -hmm. you know? All right, so, so let's just say, hypothetical question, you call me up and you uh -huh. say, hey, I got some new work and I want to show you. And I uh -huh. say, okay, as a client, what am I most mm -hmm. likely to ask you to do? Email me some photos, set up an um, in-person, what's the most likely scenario is going to happen? Your goal is to set up an in-person meeting. And, and what is the most likely scenario? Is it usually They Linda? usually will say, send me some pictures online and then usually I'll say back, well, hey, I'm going to be in your area, such and such. These, I'll give them two dates that I'll be in their area, and I'll try to get that in-person meeting because when you get that in-person meeting, yeah. that's how you get oh, the yeah. jobs. Yeah. Because people want to work with people they love working with and that they can relate to and they gel with. That's so, true. That you know what? I just did an interview yesterday, and I said the exact same thing. Yeah. At the end of the day, people want to work with people they like and that mm -hmm. they feel comfortable with and they hire people, you know. Right. Um, we have a bunch totally. of great questions left, but we also have time. It's, we have to take a break because I, I see <laughs> camera people and directors and waving their arms and looking frantic. We are, are with Dixie Dixon. we got some great questions uh, and we have some giveaways. And when we come back, I know Pete will be ready with the giveaways. Cool. No, he's not. But, we'll, but we're going to take a break and come back either tickets. way. They're virtual tickets. So stick around. We'll be right back. You're live here on The Grid. Don't go away. All right. Hi, my name is Dave Black and I'd like to welcome you to Kelby Training where you can come join me on my light painting landscapes class. One of our locations is going to be at one of the most famous iconic barns here in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Not only will we do light painting there, but we will also do some soft focus technique. The site survey will give us an opportunity to look at our subject and start to figure out where we'll have camera position and where we would be applying the light painting from. Now just because we're out here in the great outdoors in a big national park, don't think you can't do these at home. All the basics and fundamentals that we'll cover in this video will teach you how to get into light painting landscapes, whether you're out here in Teton National Park or right in your very own hometown. Come to my light painting landscapes video at kelbytraining.com. I hope to see you then. We know it's her. Okay. <laughs> hey, we are back. Uh, we're going to do our, our, our giveaways here uh, real quickly. Yeah. And hey, I, I want to add something else to the giveaways, all right? So now th this one, okay, it's going to sound weird. I want to give away 100 free passes to watch Dave Black's new Ooh. class on light painting grand landscapes. Cool. So we have an online class from Dave Black. Dave Black, how good is Dave Black? Dave Black's awesome. Amazing. Dave Black you can watch him in, over and over again. Seriously, we we're talking about how good he is today. Yeah, seriously, he's one of the best <laughs> trainers and most uh, passionate and exciting. And I mean, he, I could watch Dave Black teach milk. It's like, <laughs> here's how to drink a glass of milk, and you'd be like, God, I love this guy. I mean, he's he's brilliant. So he has a brand new class on Kelby Training Online called, uh, well, I just said it. Can we light painting grand landscapes? Thank you. Light like painting grand landscapes. Mm -hmm. So if you go to KelbyTraining.com, and you'll find Dave Black, and you can you can watch the promo of it. But it, it's terrific, and people have been writing in. Uh, the director of Kelby Training called me this week and said, "Man, people are crazy about Dave Black." I'm like, "Yeah, I know." Yeah. Awesome. Anyway, we're going to weigh 124 hour passes, so you can go watch that. So all you have to do is just write in your contest entry, just write Dave Black, and we'll know that you want one of those. Uh, so the first hundred people, of course, will we'll get that. Uh, Pete, how do we give away things? We take them to a website to the giveaway. 
So go to kelbytv.com slash contest. You're probably already on Kelby TV watching this, but if not, and then you're gonna go screen here, you can even you're gonna go to slash contest. Oh, oh, Matt brought it up here on the screen here. Here, let me just pull this down a little bit. Go to contest right here and drop down to, there's a little pop-up menu, say grid. All right, and then your name and your email, and we're not gonna share your email, but we are gonna send you spam for the rest of your entire life. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, your website, and then down here, right? You guys rock. Matt needs to shave. No, <laughs> you're going to write, you know, what something. You want. Yeah, what you want, Dave Black, okay. So we're also giving away a full conference pass you to Photoshop do, you're take World. take heat for that. <laughs> for your shaving thing. I know, because you know what? <laughs> you were mean to Matt. I know, I'm just I telling know. you, dude. Matt's my friend. He knows I'm just teasing. <laughs> like, every time I pick on Matt, literally people are like, you picked on Matt. Oh. No, I like <laughs> Matt a lot. He's one of my best friends. Not a not an issue. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, what else is our giveaway? We're giving away tickets to Matt's seminars or Photoshop RC World. seminars. If you're not sure what city they're in, go to Kelby training.com. Training. Yep. Click the live training button, and there's the next three or four cities. And Tell us what city you want to go to, and we'll 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 pick some winners, right, Pete? Cool. Pete says Pete yes. Pete says yeah. All right, we don't have that much time left. I'm kind of, we're almost out of time, so we have a bunch of questions, and Dixie's going to answer them all, either with a yes, no, or a grunt. No, she's going to answer <laughs> them really quickly. Uh, Carl Moore like asks, "What was Dixie's big break moment?" Ooh, I'm not sure if big break is the the word. I I would say that when I booked that gig for the TV show, I shot uh, for a travel show. Um, we would go around the world shooting swimsuit models, and um, it's kind of a crazy story, but we'd go around the world shooting swimsuit models, and my name sort of started getting out there because of that. So I guess that was probably one of the, the big moments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very similar to Pete's story. All right. <laughs> um, Quentin, where can I find models for fashion photography? I can't seem to find any models. I'm in Louisiana. I can tell you what your problem is, Quentin. <laughs> <laughs> um, a friend of mine owns an agency in Louisiana, actually. I think it's called Moxie Agency. Moxie Agency. Um, but other, otherwise, you can travel to Dallas. They have pretty good models in Dallas. Well, you know, it's yeah. interesting because I think pe people don't realize you can just call a modeling agency. Yeah, that's what, they, that's totally. what they're for. So I'm and just making a joke about Louisiana. <laughs> it's like Matt. It's just a joke. I love Louisiana. I've been to New Orleans many times. Great town. I, I, I know we've got a lot of questions, but I think, I think there's like mm -hmm. a good, something good that they can learn from this, which mm -hmm. is, so because he specifically said fashion photography. Right. He didn't say, I just want to shoot models and practice with lights. Right. And... The model is is a big part of that, Huge. but it's not Huge. the stylizing, the styling, and the makeup, yes, and and all those different things. Mm -hmm. So so while he might be going through the modeling mm -hmm. website that maybe he mm -hmm. doesn't like, right? Th there's other aspects to this that actually he might you know some there might be somebody that is perfect for this. He's just not seeing it because he's seeing them. True. He's seeing their model mayhem profile pic. That yeah. could be true, but you have to start out with that that right talent for whatever you're shooting. And if the model isn't the right model for the, it, for the job. It's very different than glamour. Yeah, it's, yeah it's not very glamour. different than glamour. So if you're used to like shooting like swimsuit models or something, very fa different. real fashion models are very, very different. Very they have a tall. different set of skills, a different mm. look. And, and I don't think people all realize that fashion photography is about clothing. Right. Mm -hmm. Where, you sell where the glamour clothes. photography is about the model. Right. So there is a, mm -hmm. there's quite a big difference. So sure. he, I guess what I was getting at, he's got a bigger step too. Not just yeah. to find the person, but he's got mm -hmm. to find a couple other things that right. kind of right. revolve around. Oh, because for sure. you, you, yeah. you, you may find a mm -hmm. terrific fashion model, and then what's going to happen is you're going to wind up going, wow, she doesn't look like what I was expecting. And, and then, that's because you mm -hmm. don't have the hair, hair and the makeup wardrobe. and the styling all, and the wardrobe, huge. all of those. Those, those yes. are really, really huge. Okay, so um, Lewis, we already answered your question. Any favorite modifiers for fashion in particular? You like the, the beauty dishes. Beauty dishes. Big, big Love beauty dish them. lover. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate J says, uh, having wedding experience, what tools and knowledge would you bring back if you were to do a wedding today? Oh, gosh. I was a horrible wedding photographer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, easy enough. We can move on. <laughs> And she would do nothing. Uh, LDJ Marcello, how does Dixie feel about shooting women with a 50 millimeter lens, like a 50 millimeter prime? Mm -hmm. I think it, it depends on what you're shooting. If you're shooting headshots, I think it's good to use a longer lens because it has a flattening effect and their face is going to look a lot more flattering with a longer focal length lens. Um, but if you're shooting full body or or three quarter shots, the 50 millimeters is fine usually. Yeah, and we, and we've said that a lot. Of, there's a lot of talk about this on the web, and mm -hmm. it's like if you shoot a, someone a headshot or a close up, right? Uh, especially a woman with a 50 millimeter lens, what does it do to their face? It's going to distort it. It's going to distort mm -hmm. their face. Yeah. It's very very unflattering. Right. Now, 
So when you ask, what do you think about using a 15 millimeter? You said the exact right thing is, uh, it's a bride coming down the aisle, mm -hmm. full length shot, perfect. perfect. Shooting mm -hmm. in the studio, you want full length, 15 millimeters, perfect. fine. It's, it, cause, cause it's almost like, the, the, and, and it was Cliff Mountner who, who actually said, mm -hmm. I wouldn't shoot anybody with a 50 millimeter. <laughs> he was talking about close up portraits Headshots. of women. Right. Specifically, mm -hmm. yeah. but everybody wants to just remove the headshot part and just say, "I can't ever shoot a 50 millimeter." So, <laughs> all right, 50 um, millimeter is a great. What camera body does Dixie use now? I currently use the D3X Nikon camera and the D800. Hey, that was John. John, much <laughs> love. Yo, he knows. I love that guy. All right, he's, he's uh, shoots for the uh, Eagles, Philadelphia oh, Eagles. He's very a, cool. Very good, for, very very good sports photographer. He's in nice. the sports community that I'm in, and he's a great guy. Cool. All That's right, awesome. Riker VP or Riker VP. <laughs> what do you prefer, studio location shooting? I prefer location. Cool. Mm -hmm. Quentin, do you use other colored backgrounds besides white, gray, black, or do you edit the color in post? If so, then how? Ooh, I like to shoot things as they're going to end up. I don't like to do, if I don't have to do a ton of stuff in post, I don't like to. <laughs> so if you have to choose a color, you have to choose a color background for a shoot tomorrow, your first choice mm -hmm. is? Ooh, that is hard. Probably gray or black. Yeah, and fashion gray is very, very, gray very big. Black is good too. Mm -hmm. uh, you had a beautiful black portrait in here. Can I, can I grab this book real quick? Can I just show this? I know we keep showing these. <laughs> but you had a beautiful one that is on black and it's very, I love, I love the elegantness of it. I love shooting black and white, because with black and this white, shot. you let get me, to I'm the soul. I'm going to get rid of the glare. Let me find out where the place where the <laughs> glare isn't. Oh, gosh, that's not it. Hold on. <laughs> there you go. But that, I love that. On It's Thank it's you. almost, I don't know if you might have a little backlighting on there, so mm -hmm. it, it looks like there's a tint of blue back there. Yeah, I put but, a gel on a black background. Oh, a gel on a black background. Mm -hmm. You know, people always freak out that you can light up. You can make a black background uh -huh. red with a gel. You can. Yeah. It's very, very, actually, it's fairly easy. It's much easier than making... A white background or a right. gray background, way, way, way easier. Exactly. But I love the elegance of this, right? It Thank looks a very elegant. It has a very nice look to it. Sorry. Appreciate All right. It. Uh, how much time do you spend post-processing? Um, I'm not a huge post-processor. I do the basics. I'll do skin retouching. I do that all by hand. I don't use any software or anything. Yeah. It's all like one pour at a time. <laughs> oh, you do the individual like yeah. dodging and burning pour by pour? Um, well, not exactly pour by pour. I actually use the... Was it the rubber stamp tool a lot? Yeah. yeah. So I kind of have my own way. The retouching, it there's works. an art to it. Hey, it works. So whatever means to the madness. You know, uh, Sam Yan, how important is the makeup and hair uh, artist as a, as a starter? How do you find people who would work for you? Okay. So when you're starting out, you obviously don't have a huge book to show people. So it's a little harder to get people to work for you for free. But you just kind of got to find people on your same level, like on Model Mayhem and whatnot, that are just starting out too. And once you start building your book, you're, you're going to be able to work with better and better hairstylists, better makeup artists, and sort of just grow as, you, as your book grows. Cool. Uh, do you do any black and white? Well... Love black and white. You have you have some beautiful black and white and beautiful duotones. Thank you. In your book, I feel like when you shoot or when you um, show your images in black and white, more of the emphasis goes to the soul of the image and the soul of the person. Whereas when you shoot in color, more of your eyes go towards the clothes. So if the clothes aren't spectacular, make the image black and white. You sound like Brad Moore. Brad's like, if the lighting isn't good at the concert, <laughs> make it black oh. and white. <laughs> right? That's a oh, Brad Moore man. tip. <laughs> All right, and uh, let's see. Uh, last question. Is this the last question? The last two. Yeah, okay. So DJ uh, King Julian asks, Dixie, do you have a funny story you have from shooting with a celebrity? Now, you don't have to give a celebrity's name unless you feel um, comfortable about it. Funny story. I should. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish that I did. I mean, I've gone backstage. Have you know? You know how rock stars are. They're always crazy, and it's always more... A good time. But. Oh, yeah, we're always backstage. How about you, Matt? <laughs> you hanging out a lot she backstage? She said rock stars. Yeah. <laughs> no, we go backstage. no, we go backstage with rock stars. We're always <laughs> hanging out with, you know, Motley Crue. Hey, it's me, Scott. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I come backstage? Sure, Scott, here's a pass. Come on back. <laughs> so come by tomorrow, too. Well, Van Halen, sure, Scott, come back. Yeah. My only my only hope is one of them has Yeah, we don't camera. get invited backstage. Yeah, we don't go well, backstage. Well, I mean, I haven't shot, like, you know, a ton of celebrities or anything like that. But hopefully, hopefully eventually I'll be able to. So. I think so. Oh. <laughs> Brad <laughs> just makes so. Brad wrote just to, this is a note to Dixie just make something up no one will know so That's I was shooting amazing. Jack Nicholson one day <laughs> you can't believe what happened I have a crazy story of when I shot the, the Nikon cover that's a crazy oh, okay. story All right. 
Um, I was hired to shoot for a best-selling author because he's trying to turn his book into a movie. So I had to literally read his, you know, action thriller novel and recreate some of the kind of like iconic scenes from the book. Is that where the and, helicopter shot right, came from? Exactly. Those are so good. I like those yeah, are terrific. So much. So we literally had to book a helicopter hub, and they had me on a walkie-talkie directing the second helicopter like into the frame, um, and I only had ten minutes to get that shot. So. Part of photography sometimes getting thrown into situations and you just got to wow. figure it out. <laughs> That's cool. So it was good times. Okay, but, very cool. Yeah. Well, Dixie, thank you for so much. Where thank can people so go to much. learn more about you? Where, how, where can they uh, follow you? Well, we're on Facebook. They can uh -huh. go to Dixie Dixon Photography. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you say you're not really big on Facebook? Oh. I mean, on Twitter? Um, I'll, I'm starting to be. All I'm right. trying well, to let's, be. <laughs> let's get your numbers up on Twitter then. Twitter where can is, they follow you? Um, I am Dixie Dixon. I am Dixie Dixon. Mm -hmm. okay. Dixie Dixon was not available. Can you so believe that? I am Dixie Dixon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and right. then DixieDixon.com. How about I am the real Dixie Dixon? That's true. All right. And so your website is DixieDixon.com. Uh huh. Cool. That's now, right. somebody mentioned, they mm -hmm. just mentioned in the passing that you were doing some kind of a, uh, a, a, a seminar. Yes. And what do they call it? Get it? No, what is it? What I was call it? it Get Lit. Oh, Get Lit. Get lit. Okay, Get yeah. Lit. Yeah, it was just on the screen for a second. It's like cheesy, but... Okay, so tell us real quickly, because we're, we're completely uh, out of time, but we have time for this. Okay, uh, so I'm just doing a seminar at WPPI coming in March, and yeah. talk about a little bit more about the lighting and stuff that goes into my images. So Very nice. Yeah. Be All fun, right. Fun well, thank you so much. Thank you were you awesome. So much. Awesome. You guys host. are awesome. Matt, Fish. you were yeah. pretty much the same as you always are. <laughs> Brad, thank you very, very much nice. to the crew, and cool. even Pete. <laughs> hey, we do want to thank our sponsor, Ampix, because without Ampix, well, <laughs> there's nothing. Also, tomorrow on my blog, scottkelby.com, is Free Stuff Thursday. We give away free stuff. Ooh. So every Thursday we give away free stuff. Do you know why? Because we're loose with money. Take care, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Whoa. This week's episode of The Grid is sponsored by... Impix, shoot today, upload tonight, we ship tomorrow. Manfrotto, imagine more. On one software, focused on photography. Tiffin, helping create the world's greatest images. Peach Pit Press, publishers of technology books, ebooks, and videos for creative people. Epson, exceed your vision. Expo Imaging, rogue flash benders for speedlight enthusiasts. Nick Software, photography first. And B&H Photo, the professional source.